Ladies and gentle folks, today I'm going to talk to you about the quantum physics of accents. Or maybe I will talk to you today about the quantum physics of accents. Because <laughs> obviously I'm the expert here. Was ist das? Perhaps you would be more comfortable if I speak about the quantum physics of the accents, yeah? After all, Einstein is German. Clearly, they're all scientists. Righto. I'm going to take a wild guess and say that by now you're starting to get the point. Because there is something fundamentally different between talking about quantum physics in, say, this accent and talking about quantum physics in this accent. <laughs> I mean, if you were attending a scholarly lecture on quantum physics, wouldn't you have more trust in the material? Wouldn't you believe me more if I sound like this? Or would you have more trust in the material? Would you believe me more if I sound like this? Be honest, we're talking about a fundamental difference. But is it actually fundamental or conditional? Are we conditioned to hear certain accents certain ways and therefore judge them, doubt them, get turned on by them? Huh? <laughs> because if so, then it's possible to change that conditioning. It is possible to fall in love with every accent we hear. To find respect and fascination and wonderment and learn new things from everyone we encounter and every piece of our old conditioning that pops up to be weeded through. Now, at this point, some of you are starting to get quite excited. Yeah. You're like, that's a lot of bloody accents, but I'm along for the ride. Yeah. But some of you are starting to get really annoyed with me. <laughs> There's like a loop going round and round the red. It goes, but what's your real accent? What's your real accent? The real one. It won't stop spinning, so I tell ya. Only problem is, I don't have a real accent. You heard me. Which means it's equally true to say, fasten your seatbelts, because it's all real, darling. You see, contrary to popular opinion, I weren't born talking. None of yous were. I were born making sounds, yeah, like goo and gar, innit? We're like these little sponges, yeah, with eyes and ears and complex nervous systems. And we pick it all up and try it all out until we're told no. No, that's not what we do. That's what they do. We do this. And so it begins. The first time I remember consciously changing my voice was when I was about six years old. Yes, I was, that strange six-year-old pondering consciousness. Anyway, I was about six and uh, the family phone would ring because there was just the one back then. And I'd pick it up and say, hello. And they'd say, oh, hi, Claudia, which is my mum's name. Yes, I know. Go ahead, bloat. I found it, I found it, I found a real accent. Right? Yeah. That is fine, isn't it? So I will say to your left brains, fine. If you are more comfortable putting me into a box, by all means, make yourself comfy. But know that you're doing it. Just notice your brain starting to say things like, Oh, she's American. That's why she said this, or didn't say that, or wore that, or isn't that. Just notice, for fun. Back to the phone story. 
So when I learnt to answer the phone, I learnt the way my mum said hello. It wasn't my accent at all. I didn't have one yet. I had to consciously choose a new way of speaking that would become identifiable as authentically Amy. Well, I suppose I didn't have to, but I chose to. And we actually have that choice every time we speak. It may not always feel like we do. There may be consequences to that choice. But as William Wallace said in that great Scottish documentary, Braveheart, they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! Now I know there are some of you watching now for whom that is very real. And this video is for you. So I promised you some quantum physics, right? So at the quantum level, when you wish to communicate effectively with someone, you adjust the manner in which you talk to them. Sometimes this is conscious, and sometimes unconscious, but is it any more or less authentically you? For example, let's say you go to a concert and it's so mind-blowingly amazing that you are leaping out of your skin with bliss. Then you wanna share that feeling with two people you love who are both lifelong music lovers, your brother and your grandma. So you call up your brother and you want him to feel what you feel. Just picture him for a moment. Is he younger, older, really easygoing or a little tight? How does he talk to you? Just imagine what you would say if you want him to feel what you feel. I'd probably say, dude, bro, I saw this sick concert last night. And my bro would feel me. His electrons would be fired up, we'd be vibing, our energetic wave patterns would be in phase on a quantum level, and we would share a sense of belonging. Now you call your grandma, and since you only have one real accent, you say, dude, bro, I saw this sick concert last night. What's that? Well, you don't call your granny dude or bro then? Might your granny even think that sick concert gave you the COVID? Just picture her for a moment. If you want her to feel what you feel, how would you adjust your volume, number one, so she can hear you properly, your tone, melody, pacing, your articulation quotient, grammar, jargon, your accent, to really communicate with her. Does she even use the same language that you usually use? I'd probably say, oh my goodness, Graham, I saw the most wonderful concert last night. And my Graham would feel me. We would share a sense of belonging. Now, we all do this. I just happen to be the kind of actor who assumes it's part of the job to be able to do accents accurately enough to say, move to Australia and within three days be rocking up to the bottle eye with my esky for a few crannies and some goon. And in case you're not familiar, a crowny is a crown lager and goon is wine that comes in a box. Highly recommend the crownies, not so much the goon. Yes, but what about love? At least with my friends in New Zealand, if someone loves you, they'll do their best to understand you, however you express yourself. That's fair enough. But self-expression is different from communication. True communication involves communing. There's a merging that happens. This is even proven by science. It's called quantum entanglement. The energy of your bodies and beings becomes entangled. It resonates together. We feel viscerally how well we're being understood and accepted. And when we're those young little impressionable sponges learning how to be human, being understood and accepted as we are is tantamount to survival. 
And then, as adults who can meet most of our own basic needs, being understood and accepted as we are can equate to our sanity. And it can still equate to our survival. No wonder public speaking is the number one fear among humans. Now, I realize that as a white, middle-class, able-bodied, cisgendered woman, I have only a glimpse of how terrifyingly real it is that I am talking about survival. When someone doesn't understand me or accept me, the prevailing systemic hierarchical conditioning still pretty much assures my safety. And if we want that to be true for everyone, and I know we do, the good news is this. Just as we can control how we sound, we can control how we listen. We can let different ways of talking pull us in with loving interest and compassion. We can be fascinated by the joy of communing with someone who expresses himself differently from how we ourselves do, which is everybody, by the way. We might even discover new authentic ways of expressing ourselves just by experiencing their authenticity. So let's try it. Let's just try on a few accents and see if any of that pesky old conditioning pops up to be weeded through. Okay? So I'm gonna say something and, and you just repeat it back. I'll give a little bit of an intro to the place and then I'll say a line and you say it back. All right? In Minnesota, we say, oh, for cute. In Australia, we might say, let's skull some goon. And when I moved to New Zealand, I had to use a phone card. Remember those? And the automated voice said, please enter your pen. Now, I had a pen in my hand, but she was quite obviously talking about a pin. Yes, a pen. You know, numbers like five, six, seven. Good. <sighs> and my favorite wee line from that. Scottish documentary, Braveheart. Your heart is free. Have the courage to follow it. Freedom! <laughs> That's great. This is fun. Let's do another experiment. So I'm gonna just talk in this accent for a minute and all you have to do is listen and notice. If that old conditioning causes any judgments to go flying through your brain. Like, did she just say flying? It's flying. And why does the middle of her sentence sound like a question? And what is a sentence? Does she know we communicate with real words? Yes, I do. And that is the point. There is not one way to speak correctly. There are infinite ways to speak authentically. Being authentic, having the courage to follow our free hearts is much more fun than trying to be correct. So we're going to do one more experiment and just see how much fun we can have. <laughs> yes, I know, I won't actually know whether you're doing it, but you will. But I promise you, it'll be much more fun and you'll get it more, you'll feel it more if you actually do participate. So, we'll leave it to you. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna just pop into this accent again. I know, notice if that conditioning is back because you can handle it now. You're a pro, okay? So I'm gonna say something and you're gonna repeat it exactly as I say it. Side note, this is not your high school French class where the teacher says la poubelle and you say la poubelle. I am a perfectionist. <laughs> And since you have come all this way in this video, obviously you are too. So there will be no half-assing. 
this is fun we're having here. And I take that very seriously. Are we agreed? Good. Okay. So I'm going to say a line. You're going to repeat it back. It's going to be amazing. We're just going to tell this teensy weensy little story. Okay. Oh my God. You will never believe what just happened. This person was legit hot. And they totally looked at me. And it was like literally a supernova in my heart. I know, right? Amazing! <laughs> so the next time you hear someone speak, which will be now, and henceforth for your entire life, remember your quantum superpowers to notice how you're listening. Let's see if together we can have a little less conditioning and a little more commune in our communication. Thank you.